Hello my beautiful patrons, how are you today? It's Monday, best day of the week. <laughs> and um, it's a beautiful sunny day. It was a spectacular weekend. Um, wow, feeling good, summer's finally here. Um, and this morning I um, cut off my beard and my hair so I don't look homeless anymore, which is also nice. You know, to start the week looking like, you know, you have a job and money for <laughs> for, for, for your mortgage. <laughs> um, so, on, on Saturday, Georgina, my, my, my wife and I, we did a live cooking class on, on YouTube. We did a, um, we cooked a Spanish omelette, a tortilla de patatas. And um, it was really fun, actually. Did you, did you like it? Yeah, Did you enjoy? Yeah, it yeah, yeah, it was good. Um, and, and everyone, I think everyone, you know, from the comments, everyone enjoyed it. Um, and, and what's interesting, I got a message this morning from Gosha, and she said that because in the in the live class, I talked about um, uh, an English idiom, which is to have a chip on your shoulder, because during the cooking we made chips of potato, right? So. Um, to have a chip on her shoulder, and she sent me a picture of this of this book she's reading. Um, where is it? So she's reading this book, right? And in the book, on on this page, she's underlined it. There are two, there are two uses of the word chip to chip off pieces, right? Now, this is an example of something called the Bader-Meinhof effect, which is when you know that something, when, when something is in your consciousness suddenly you start to notice it everywhere. So like, imagine if you're going to buy a new car and you, you, you know, you're thinking about, I'm gonna buy the, I don't know, the Ford Fiesta. And suddenly everywhere there's Ford Fiestas. Or maybe you discover a new, um, a new brand of, of sports drinks, right? And you never heard of this sports drinks before, but suddenly you see it everywhere. You see it in the supermarkets, in magazines, on television. It's it's Bader Meinhof, and it's a really um, fascinating effect. But the great thing is that with language, when you learn something new and then you start to see it, that's when you know your 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 brain is making those connections. That's when you know you're going to remember that vocabulary, um, and you know that's that's why. It's, it's an example of how um, you cannot just sit down with a list of words. Well, you can, <laughs> but it's not the best way. You know, you, the best thing is to learn, learn things in context, make those connections, and then, and then you remember them. Um, okay, today's word of the day is a great word, actually. The word is tantalize. I don't know if you have a word that seems similar in your language to tantalize. What is the dictionary definition? It is to tease or torment by presenting something desirable, but you keep it out of reach. So it's like, it's like, it's like teasing, right? It's like, here, look at this beautiful, amazing thing. Wow, isn't it great? You, you can't have it. It's mine. Oh, it smells so good and oh, it looks so good, but you can't have it. I'm tantalizing you. And the origin of this word is just, this is fantastic. I think if I was ever going to become religious, there were two religions for me on the, two possibilities. One is Buddhism, because I think Buddhism is more of a system of, maybe a more of a, more of a, um, I don't know, maybe a system of ethics than a religion. Yeah, like a lifestyle, like a system of morals and a religion. And, and the other possibility is the Greek, the ancient Greek gods, because they were just, <laughs> the stories are just so great. And like, they were so imperfect, like in, in the sort of the, um, the, the Judeo-Christian God, you know, he's a perfect guy, right? Everything he does is perfect. But the Greek gods... They were terrible, man. They were adulterers and, and murderers and, and like, um, they were just, they had lots of character flaws. It was more realistic, you know? Um, so the story of this word is there was a king. He was King Tantalus, King Tantalus. And he uh, was 
punished. Okay, his punishment was he had to stand in the water. Okay, so the level the level of the water was here, and above him there was a tree full of of ripe fruit, ripe delicious fruit, just hanging here. So he had this fruit hanging here, and he had this water. He was standing in the water up to his chin here. So he had the the, the drink and the food right in front of him, you know, right in front of Tantalus. But he could never drink or eat. No matter how hungry or thirsty he was, he could never drink or eat. And that that is, that's to be tantalized. Um, Yeah. And so I can think of some fixed idioms to tantalize your taste buds, tantalize the senses. And all, again, because of, you know, these Greek gods, like so many words from Greek, Greek mythology. Echo... And, you know, um, Sisyphus, like, and um, Hercules, you know, all of these things that we have in, in English, you know, a Herculean task, a Sisyphean, um, a Sisyphean um, job, you know. Well, um, I hope you guys have a, have a great day today. And, you know, don't forget to do something with your English, do something fun. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.